Welcome to Morningstar. I'm Larissa Fernand, and with me today is veteran investor Bharat Shah, who is the executive director of ASK Investment Managers. Mr. Shah, welcome, and thank you so much for your time today. Good to be with you. Thanks. Mr. Shah, way back in September 1999, the Birla Balance Fund mobilized about 335 crore. At that time, it was so big. Now it seems relatively smaller. So how have you changed emotionally, mentally, psychologically from managing those amounts to managing such humongous amounts of money today? In the context of India's economy and India's market cap, Managing uh, five, six billion dollars is not a humongous amount. It's rather actually modest amount. The opportunity is to do multifold uh, that number and still uh, it will look to be really meaningfully uh, small even then. Secondly, size of the money does, of course, uh, put some amount of restraint on very small opportunities uh, that you may want to find or enter into. But I don't believe that uh, there is any material or any important difference in uh, doing that. Ultimately, there is no clear basis to show over meaningful periods of time whether the large businesses or mid-sized businesses or small-sized businesses have decisively done better in a predictable pattern. So in some periods, some index may be ahead. In some other periods, some other index may be ahead. But there is no predictable methodology to say there is a clear-cut likelihood of greater correlation of um, greater performance with a certain size of the business. Therefore, when you manage larger amount of money, some very small businesses, you may not be able to practically speaking buy. But I don't think in any meaningful way it can make difference over long enough period of time. In this uh, country's economy is going to grow multifold. I think uh, that growth will reflect into the profits and cash flows of all the good and quality businesses in turn into their valuation and uh, uh, therefore the wealth of the owners of these businesses. And eventually it will reflect into the portfolios of investors who are long-term and discipline, uh, wise about what they do, because the opportunity is truly giant rather. And it is not for a short period, it's for a long period. It's not shallow, it is deep. And uh, therefore, over, over these coming couple of decades, if not more, the opportunity to create wealth is phenomenally high in the economy, for the businesses, and for the discipline wise investors. Therefore, over a period of time, these size of money, etc., is just a mental framework. Okay. When you are basically mindset is driven to sport and uh, notice value and put a meaningful sums behind those opportunities in the context of the extent uh, size of the economy and the market today and more importantly, the much bigger size that is awaiting both for the economy and the markets. Uh, these amounts are not uh, really very significant. So I don't even think about it. I mean, you never want to take a shelter and uh, uh, that your size is X or Y and therefore that should affect your outcome. No. The opportunity is so large that you yes. have a duty to generate meaningful outcomes uh, tapping into that opportunity at whatever size that you operate. Yes. What is the trait you look for when you're recruiting a very young fund manager? Investing is a tough game. Is uh, Many times it is say it is simple, but not easy. And uh, there is a huge, huge truth behind uh, that very facile looking statement. There are many things where actually investing is very contradictory to the what appeals to the normally uh, human beings. For example, by definition, most humans spend bulk of the time either ruminating over the past or dealing with the present. Uh, maybe 90-95% of the time is spent uh, either with the past or present. 
while in investing actually 90-95% of the time is to be spent in mulling over the future. However difficult it may be to predict future, to uh, make meaningful forecast about it, and to time to time find that you may go terribly wrong in your judgments. But that is not getting away from looking at the future, judging the future, uh, making some meaningful conclusions, and acting upon them today based on a likely future which may prevail. And therefore, investing fundamentally puts you into a mindset uh, which is different from what most people tend to think. Secondly, investing requires you to really deal with longer term. And most humans feel comfortable thinking about near term because near term sounds more concrete, yeah. more palpably in the hands, while uh, longer term future sounds distant and hard to touch and feel. And therefore, Many a times, uh, the longer term future really is something that sounds amorphous to most of the people. But in investing, the very structure of the investing gain demands that you have to be long term. Because in the short run, prices are influenced both by rationality and emotionality. But in the long run, prices are determined mostly by rationality. Value is determined by rationality, while prices at a point of time is a mixture of both rationality and emotionality. Given that nature and the fact that over a longer term, role of emotionality reduces, and therefore the role of rationality becomes dominant, and therefore prices become more aligned to the value rather than what they may be in a particular shorter term. Therefore, it requires you to be long term. But human nature is about dealing with the immediacy and okay. near term. Thirdly, I will say investing requires you to be able to carry two contrary emotions in your head simultaneously and yet not making a mincemeat of yourself. That you have to be trust, but you have to doubt. You have confidence, yet you have enough diffidence to keep checking. You have belief, but you also have skepticism. And that yin and yang of contrary behavior simultaneously on the things that you are doing or you have not done uh, is a very necessary mindset for good long-term investment. But which again is very hard uh, for most people to do. Resilience, adaptability, ability to alter one's opinion and view based on new insights and a new understanding or new facts uh, is a very necessary aspect. And that doesn't come from intellect. It comes from the inner personality. Your ability to adjust and readjust your views based on emergent new ideas or realities is a very necessary aspect of uh, being a good investor, but again, doesn't come easily. And high intellect doesn't guarantee that you're more adaptable and more flexible in know. order to readjust your views when there is a need to. And therefore, a right degree of conviction and uh, not having undue ego is a very important uh, aspect. Finally, yeah. independence of mind. Uh, ability to think differently, not differently for the sake of being different, yeah. but differently because it is rewarding to be different in that situation. Got it. Therefore, yeah. independence of the mind is a very important aspect. But markets make it very tough at a particular point of time. Markets are uh, that uh, classic uh, voting machine, uh, but you need to be a weighing machine. And for a long period of time, even if you are thinking right, markets can make you look like a fool. Yeah. And even a perfectly bad idea, markets temporarily can make you look like a genius. And therefore, living through those periods when market behavior may not exactly be the best thing to be there, and yet carry on uh, with what you have to do without losing your mind, is a very important uh, aspect. 
markets are not designed to make you succeed and markets have no favor to offer you just because you put some capital to work you have to earn returns from the market with folded ends with discipline and by having a right process and having a right behavioral pattern and therefore it is the duty of the investor to earn returns it is not an uh, obligation on the markets to make you rich and wealthy simply because you put money to the markets so yeah. therefore there are many many personality traits apart from obviously reasonable amount of thinking apparatus and graces to be able to think through many different aspects lovely yeah uh, it is these aspects which are very very vital and Got finally uh, there are not too many branches uh, of knowledge uh, that at least i have uh, come to know other than investing paid there are so many different branches of knowledge interact with each other to build a, a final capability to do better therefore investing in many ways is a latest work of many branches of knowledge it could be physics it could be biology it could be philosophy it can be spirituality it is history economics finance psychology there are too many branches of knowledge that you need to have interesting belief in make it a point to a uh, kind of build it including i'll say even good literature many of these things you do not know immediately how it helps you but it does over a period of time when okay. many different branches that you will remain exposed to and have reasonable amount of understanding that these different branches of knowledge combine together to build a final latest work so these are some of the important like uh, things that you want to observe in the people all right yeah is to when they want to embark on investing journey got it what was uh, you you've been through various uh, upheavals in the market what was your biggest learning from the global financial crisis and from the dot com bust of 2000 uh, markets remain cyclical and uh, even if uh, there are structural reasons for markets to deliver you know a particular directional outcome markets still remain within that longer term directional movement a uh, very cyclical essential that cyclicality essentially arises from human sentiments the ego the fear the greed yeah the please uh, the malice uh, uh, envy many human emotions uh, really go cyclical and therefore generally i would say uh, economies themselves have their own cycles businesses within a particular economy will have their own independent cycles based on the context of that business and the where it is placed in a relative scheme of things and markets both markets in aggregate and in individual stock within a market also have their own cyclicality so there are many cycles uh, that run simultaneously economy has its own cycle businesses have their own cycles individual stock will have their own cycles and the markets in aggregate will have cycles the cycles are outside your control you have no real capability to make any meaningful firm judgment on how each cycle will play out you right. can have an opinion but enough opinions will go wrong when you make yeah. enough of those opinions you know yeah, yeah. true therefore there is no predictable method through which you can arrive at judgment of any of these cycles correct yeah if the only real guide available is where and that remains to my mind an eternal truth prices are eventually slaves of the real earning power of a business because it is the real earning power which determines the value of a business therefore eventually prices are slaves of the value if you know and if you have a good judgment of a value in future 
then I think you have a good judgment of what the price will look like in the future. And to that extent, price today and price uh, tomorrow gives you a view about compounded returns that you will earn in the intervening period. Equally, price today and value today uh, gives you a glimpse into margin of safety or one-time gap between price and value uh, that is available today on the table. Okay. And of course, the future in any case is to give you uh, two compounding annuities out of the earnings growth in the future or the cash flow growth and the quality of that growth which sits like an icing on the cake. So apart from these two annuities, cheapness of price compared to value gives you margin of safety today. And therefore, while too many efforts are spent in judging cycles and making very profound statements about the cycles and at times acting upon it, I do not have great faith in that. I would think you have a far, far better chance uh, to do the right thing if you remain true to the task of judging value, keep revising, keep re-understanding the computation of value. If there are any new insights, new facts, new ideas that have come to the light or new developments have happened. And your true allegiance has to be to that value. Got it. And your value is a lotus star or the north star and price eventually has to gravitate even if it is fairly or materially different from the value at a particular point of time eventually it will align and therefore that is the only predictable way to succeed in the game long term all right secondly even mega events of this kind, like the global financial crisis, there is no reason to believe that just because things play out at a global level, that they are necessarily very profound and necessarily very intelligent and necessarily very right. Many times, even at a global level, enough foolish and irrational things happen. And therefore, simply because events look gigantic in proportion, doesn't necessarily mean they are right. One more example in that I can offer is what happened immediately in the wake of the COVID pandemic. So in a matter of few months after March 20, market simply caved in, you know, out of the many fears. And of course, there were legitimate reasons and rationale for one to have fear. But the fear was probably uh, uh, unreasonable and extreme and therefore prices reflected that pain and then prices uh, restored back to where they truly belong is a greater understanding and less emotionality came into the picture. Therefore, even at a global level, many of the events happen do not mean uh, necessarily mean that these events are uh, profound, they are deep or necessarily very intelligent things which are happening. A lot of silly things happen in the world also. And at a grand canvas, a lot of foolish things play out. We have to remain observant, finally, uh, of the two businesses, their values and act accordingly. And final point I'll say, investing is not about, you know, index predicting. It is not about judging markets. It is not about riding a theme. It is not riding some sectors. It is not riding some approach, mid cape, large cape, small cape, time to time acquire fashion. It is not uh, geopolitical, global or other factors either, however material they may look like. And in some sense, it is not even macroeconomics. Uh, even though uh, it is important. And overall, all of these factors have some meaning. But finally, investment action is micro. It is not macro. So long as you understand the business and why its earnings will grow and why it will grow materially and why it will grow in a qualitatively sound way over a long period of time, and therefore, you can under, uh, convert that understanding into judgment of value. And if you act on discipline with that, you have to eventually make money and positive returns. 
Therefore, investing remains uh, there to bottom up micro disciplined activity, global geopolitical, macroeconomic, style, fashions, trains, index judging. All of these are popular sports and deployed in the markets, but they have nothing to do really meaningfully over investing. And therefore, we have to learn to dissociate from uh, these kind of factors. Of course, one final thing I'll say, long-term trajectory of the economy and long-term likely trajectory of the markets is a broad view Do you do develop. Like uh, one does have an opinion, I have an opinion that coming decades are going to be among the most productive one for Indian economy and hence for the markets, the businesses and therefore uh, the investors. But uh, that broad view is useful to have as a general long-term direction. But within that, uh, the entire activity remains bottom-up micro-activity, not a micro-activity is global and other events. Uh, and my last question to you is, how do you manage expectations? Your investors have a set of expectations. You have your own uh, expectation of what your portfolio can generate. How do you manage? How do you balance it? Uh, I believe there is a very important aspect of absolute returns and relative returns. Secondly, there is a very important pair of capital preservation approach and capital appreciation as an objective. And third, to appreciate the role of intangibles, you know, value over the price, quality of growth, not just quantum of growth, risk management, and not only returns. All of these, if you see, there is a qualitative aspect like risk management, quality of the growth and value, and then seemingly quantitative aspect like price or uh, you know, quantum of growth rate or uh, given returns earned in a particular period. But in investing, intangibles have a greater role to play in longer term success than the tangibles only. Tangibles are needed, but intangibles have a bit of a greater role. And therefore, long term is a far better mindset and a role to play compared to short term. An idea is to constantly iterate, reiterate these ideas to your investors. And importantly, you have to play within that in your own investment firmament, practicing these ideas. So philosophically, absolute is the core purity of investment. I mean, you have to have a belief and confidence that through judicious stock selection, through uh, proper risk control, uh, through your investment methods and processes in a disciplined way, you will make an absolute positive, compounded and satisfying outcome over a fair period of time without any argument or debate or fight with Mr. Market. So without any argument with Mr. Market, whether you can believe and have a confidence that you will generate absolute positive outcome over a period or not. And I think there is a huge amount of value on that. Because when you focus on absolute, your stock selection, your valuation approach, your methodology, your long-term mindset, all of them get shaped very strongly by that objective. The beauty is when you focus on uh, uh, absolute, relative superiority or alpha comes out as a byproduct automatically. You don't have to work for it separately. While relative also because the world demands uh, relative some kind of affirmation because relative sounds very concrete and strong. Absolute sounds a bit abstract and therefore world does demand uh, relative affirmation. But the beauty is when you focus on purity of absolute, relative comes out as a byproduct. Similarly, capital preservation is a core objective and that stems from risk management is the core objective. The capital appreciation is a very important objective but comes just thereafter. 
and uh, you're not investing merely to preserve capital ultimately you invest to grow and therefore capital appreciation without that there can't be any investing but the beauty is when you have a mindset of capital preservation as a core capital appreciation comes out as a by product you don't have to work for it specifically much like your focus on absolute generates a relative as a by product equally when you focus on risk control is a core objective an important idea returns come out as a by product uh, because ultimately return c is critical and vital therefore all of these dovetails very well with the fact that it is in the long term that you have a greater ability to get that relative as well as absolute together preservation as well as appreciation together and returns which are judiciously tempered by the risk which has been undertaken therefore reiterating these ideas and continued focus on long term without losing short term agility watchfulness and uh, uh, you know ability to alter when there is a need to alter all of these remain important watchwords uh, for communicating practicing and iterating and reiterating there is no getting away from that got it okay and my last question to you is is there any investing principle that you believe in that is not very popular no i don't think uh, that the principles are unknown uh, i don't have some profound secret knowledge that the world doesn't <laughs> have that will be granting too much credit to myself and which i am not entitled to even remotely earn okay investing remains simple okay but not easy the ideas are simple principles are simple practicing them remains very tough i mean intellect doesn't teach you discipline yeah, much like intellect doesn't assure character or wisdom either intellect is needed but uh, i would say discipline character and wisdom are even greater aspects of investing uh, than uh, people give a credit to ah lovely Basically, there is a deep and sustained bias to overvalue near term and systemically undervalue the long term yeah you these biases are ingrained in the human nature yeah and to that extent they reflect into the markets as well right investing uh, does uh, become relatively easier thing to practice if you remain strictly focus on that long term without losing agility and watchfulness of the short term finally i would say that too much uh, uh, premium is put on the growth in the markets uh, growth of course is very important without growth uh, there is no value creation exactly. even in nature nothing remains static if it remains static it regresses in businesses it is even more so if something remains static it will regress much faster uh if it remains static for a long period of time so growth is inevitable but i think quality of growth is under regarded and undervalued in the market in the near term quality gives age to a business resilience adaptability to the challenges in the environment it allows it a character to deal with the vicissitudes of the environment it gives longevity to business it gives a greater uh, you know age to prevail for a long period of time and keep creating superior value and therefore quality is not some esoteric fanciful philosophical thing to be bandied around it's a very real uh, part of the investing but unfortunately tangible always looks concrete and real an intangible like quality sounds distant and remote and therefore unfortunately is not always as value but it is why both quantum of growth and quality of growth are needed it is not as if one can do one or the other you need both but i would say role of the quality uh, is a little higher uh, than the uh, the quantum of the growth 
yeah. much like there is mathematics and science of investing and there is an art and language through which investment expresses itself uh, science and mathematics of the investing is important without that it uh, gets a vagueness and imprecision but over attitude to uh, give precision to investment is actually a problem and therefore art or the language of expressing investment i would say is even slightly more important than the mathematics and science okay. oh. many of these uh, ideas remain interspersed uh, but there is no uh, centuries of in uh, markets really uh, lay out very clearly what are things which have worked in investing and which have prevailed and my effort at any point of time is to be just a good student of that history correct rather than trying to be a voyager or a columbus having <laughs> discovered some fundamentally new ideas neither okay. i have capability nor i suspect there are um, some fundamental truths to be discovered truths are all there okay. it is our ability to practice and practice in a disciplined way which is more critical. lovely Mr Shah that was a wealth of insights and I thank you so much for your time thank you very much thank you. this is Larissa from Morningstar thank you for watching